What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here to ask and answer the question, how good is Great Thief for soloing? Just as a side note, this class has some mechanics which seem to be built for PvP, but in these videos I avoid PvP entirely. As you guys probably know by now, this series is where I do a comprehensive overview of the class in question. This includes how to obtain the class, what enhancements to use, what weapon range to use, what the abilities and passives do, how to use the class, how well it serves its designated purpose, and finally I wrap up things with my own opinion on said class. If you'd like any other classes to receive this treatment, then let me know in the comment section down below, on Twitter, or on my Discord server. Links for that are in the description down below. Either way though, let's start off the video by going over how to obtain Great Thief. Great Thief is pretty controversial for how much it costs. Great Thief currently is only able to be obtained by having 10 hero points. Each hero point is earned by purchasing items from heromart.com, which is AQW's merchandise website. One hero point is earned for every $5 spent on, el on eligible items. Now you can actually get two hero points for free in-game, I believe, so you're only really going to be looking at around $40 for your items plus shipping costs before you can actually purchase the Great Thief class. Once you've obtained 10 hero points, you go to slash join hero mount in-game and complete the 10 hero points quest. Enhancements are pretty simple for this class. The class description recommends that you enhance with Thief and Lucky, and now this is interesting because clearly, when you're using this class, you're going to deal less damage with Thief Enhancements over Lucky Enhancements. That much is pretty obvious. But, this class actually gains mana and HP back when it dodges, and as you probably know, Thief Enhancements will generally increase the amount you dodge. So you find yourself in a situation where you have to look at yourself and think, do I want damage or survivability? Now, granted, your survivability is still pretty fine with Luck Enhancements, but in soloing situations where you're struggling, you might want to start adding Thief Enhancements to your gear. It's really up to you though. Personally, I use full luck because I'm level 85 and no bosses really pose much of a challenge to me. But at level 50, for example, might want to use two luck, two thief because they might struggle a bit with more fights. Like I said, it's up to you. Just test things out and see what it's like. But luck and thief are generally the way to go. Weapon range is another pretty simple area with this class. Basically, Great Thief has a pretty high reliance on RNG and as such, I found it really difficult to measure its DPS accurately. All you can really look at in terms of its damage is just the raw crits. As with a lot of classes like Great Thief, the more stable the better generally. Like I said, it's kind of hard to measure. I was trying to measure the DPS and the RNG elements, just, just kept messing up my, my measurements, but generally the numbers seem to be higher when I use the stable weapon over something more unstable. So just go for something as stable as possible, I suppose. It's not really a big deal though. Great Thief, like most classes these days, has two rank 4 passives and one rank 10 passive. Your two rank 4 passives are an increase in your luck by 20% and an increase in your dodge chance by 20%. Now your rank 10 passive is called Hidden Blade and it's actually kind of interesting. So at rank 1, so whenever you have the class, no matter what rank you are, this effect will be in play, your auto attacks have a 20% chance to apply a 150% physical damage buff for 4 seconds. So that effect is called Hidden Blade, and that can be applied no matter what rank you are. And Hidden Blade, the name of the passive, will, at rank 10, will increase your dodge chance by 15%. So there are two like Hidden Blade things you need to remember. One of them is the effect, and one of them is the increase in your dodge chance by 15%. Now let's discuss Great Thief's five abilities. So number one is your auto attack. It's called Quick Stabs, and it has a 1.5 second cooldown. Now, it's basically just a normal auto attack, apart from the fact that it has a 20% chance to apply the effect, as I said before, called Hidden Blade, and that Hidden Blade effect will increase your own physical strike damage by 150% for 4 seconds. So, it's 20% chance of applying, so it doesn't apply that often, but you can sort of, kind of rely on it to activate every 5-6 seconds or so, I guess. It's sort of in that ballpark, but sometimes it won't activate for ages, and sometimes it'll activate over and over again. You know, that's just the, the nature of chance. Your next ability, ability number two, is called Treasure Toss, and it consumes 20 mana and has a 4 second cooldown. Now this ability, it does damage, and but its, its main effect is the fact that it has a chance to apply one of five effects. Now these five effects all have a 35% of whatever aura is described by it, and they all last 12 seconds. So just to be clear, all of them are 35% of whatever effect is in play that I'm going to describe, and they all last 12 seconds. The five effects are a decrease in enemy outgoing damage, a decrease in the enemy haste, an increase in the enemy's incoming damage, a powerful dot, and that's 700%, not 35%, um, and it, 
your final effect is called Lunar Master's Pearls and this will decrease your enemy's hit chance. And again, all those effects except for the dot have a 35% of whatever was described and they all last 12 seconds. You'll be able to see an image on screen anyway of all of that. Your next ability, ability number three, is called Stealth and this consumes 30 mana and has a 16 second cooldown. Slip into the shadows to avoid detection from your foes. Applies stealth, increasing dodge and hit chance by 35% for 10 seconds. So, this ability doesn't get you back any mana, um, which is a pretty big problem with this class. And so you're really just consuming 30 mana and not getting anything back for it. However, uh, it does pretty much increase your chance of dodging to 100%. You're almost never going to be hit when you're using this ability and they've designed the class in that that specific way it's still it's still there's a chance there of you being hit but all the other dodge like passives and stuff and all of this and the, the enhancements and all that combined to make for a if, if you've got some thief enhancements as well you're pretty much never going to be hit when using this ability if you're using a lot of luck then yeah you're probably going to be hit sometimes but it's still a really low chance of being hit when using this ability hence why it's called stealth because it's, it's sort of like you are going invisible that's the sort of concept of this ability um, and it also increases your hit chance by 35%. Now, because the effect lasts 10 seconds and the cooldown is 16 seconds, you can actually get it to a point where you're only 6 seconds when you're not in stealth. However, you're probably going to run into mana anyway, but we'll talk about that later. The next ability, ability number 4, is called Coin Flip, and this ability consumes no mana and has a 20 second cooldown. Flip a magically enchanted coin, and it calls Heads or Tails. Heads will apply a large hot over 12 seconds, which is about 250 at my uh, level 85 character. Or tails, which reduce, which returns about half your mana, and it's probably a little bit more than that generally. It's generally a bit more than half your mana. Um, so yeah, that that ability has a 20 second cooldown, so you really just need to be spamming that just over and over again. There's no need to not use it. Um, your last ability is called a backstab, and it consumes 40 mana, has a 24 second cooldown. Attack your foe when they least expect it, dealing huge damage. If stealth is active, which is again ability number three, you know the the invisible ability. Um, if that if that effect is active, it stuns your opponent for four seconds. If Hidden Blade is active, which is your auto attack, um, like effect that has a 20% chance of applying, causes your enemies to bleed out, dealing moderate damage over 8 seconds. Now, as for actually using this class, you must of course remember that this class is a soloing class, or at least I'm assessing it today as a soloing class. And so, one thing I noticed was the stealth ability, ability number 3, use it sparingly. You're so in theory, you're going to gain mana and HP back as you dodge more, but generally the enemy doesn't attack you enough to justify using this ability um, based on its mana cost, right? You're going to use the, the ability, stealth, consume 30 mana, and then you're hoping to gain more than 30 mana back. Largely, that doesn't happen. So then what's the point in using stealth? Well, let's, let's look at what stealth does. Slip into the shadows to avoid detection from your foes, apply stealth, increasing dodge and hit chance by 35% for 10 seconds. So you're really just increasing your hit chance by 35%. Is it worth the mana cost? I'd say it's not. You can use it in situations where you feel like, you know, ah, oh, crap, I'm low on health. Let's use this and you'll, you're 100% going to stay alive. You know what I mean? Dodging not only increase, it gains you health back, but it's, it's a time when you're not going to be attacked. So yeah, if you're in a situation where you need to actually dodge some attacks and you're taking a lot of damage and you're like, I might die, stealth is a really good way of surviving. Great survivability ability. But in terms of just using it from day-to-day -day use to try and get damage, I'd say avoid it. Um, but it, again, it's up to you. If you can f manage to gain more than 30 mana back for every usage of stealth, then that's it. You've, it's worth it because you're gaining more mana back. But I find myself not gaining enough mana back to justify it. Everything else though, just spamming everything else is pretty much the way to go. Um, one thing important to keep in mind is Hidden Blade, which is the increase in 150, you get 150% increase in physical damage, that there will affect your damage greatly. You have 150% increase, so it's a huge damage buff. So it means you need to really sort of make the most of that. So if you see Hidden Blade activate, I'd recommend waiting until you see Hidden Blade activate before you use Backstab, which is your nuke. It's uh, it, it makes it much more worthwhile. You can get bigger, bigger, uh, a lot larger damage. I don't want to say bigger, bigger. You can get a lot larger damage out of this class if you wait for Hidden Blade before you use Backstab. But generally, it's not a big deal. And honestly, it's a matter of just spamming stuff. Hidden Blade sometimes won't activate for ages. And at which point, you're just going to be sitting there thinking, you know, why don't I just use my abilities to actually deal damage right now? Because, uh, it, yeah, it can be frustrating waiting for Hidden Blade to activate. So it's really up to you. It's not really a specific combo. There's not really anything else to remember, to be honest, with using this, this class. Just spam stuff and probably avoid... Ability number three, but it's up to you. 
So how well does this class actually serve its purpose of soloing? Well, to start with, it doesn't really conserve mana all that well, despite the fact that it's got a mana regeneration ability, and you generate mana from dodging, and you can increase your dodge by a lot, you still have mana problems, and it's a, it's a pretty big issue for this class. However, you can kind of just, I guess, I guess slow down on how much you're using your abilities to sort of, I guess, stabilize your mana cost at sometimes, and sometimes you end up dodging a bunch more than you would normally, and so you conserve mana fine then. So it's not that much of an issue, um, and it's still, this class is an amazing soloing class. It's really, really good. I haven't compared it to anything else specifically, and it's kind of hard to, like, make a judgment on that without doing, like, a full comparison, but still, it's a very, very good soloing class, easily top five, I'd say. Um, and so yeah, it's, it'd be interesting to see a comparison. Give me some suggestions in the comment section down below if you want to actually see a class comparison with this class in it. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a really good Solomon class. It's all I can really say. Um, its health regeneration model is still kind of a bit garbage and it doesn't actually do anything to reduce the amount of damage the enemy does to you reliably. And I said reliably, there is a thing in there on the second ability that does that, but it's not reliable. So you can't solo stuff like Desolate, sure. Um, even, I, I don't think you'd probably be able to solo Binky with this or anything like that, but still, 99% of bosses in the game are going to be fine, and uh, it does a lot of damage. It's got good damage output, you got pretty decent healing, kind of mana problems, but it's overall it's a good, it's a good Solomon class. And well, what's my opinion on that? Well, it's, it's pretty, eh, it's, it's kind of, eh, eh, is it worth the money? Eh, not really. It's not really worth the money. You can get Lightcaster, which I'd probably say is is maybe equal, if not better. Um, and you can get Shadow Stalker of Time, which is the best soloing class in the game. So it's yeah, it's not really worth your money. And is it fun? Not really, not particularly. I don't think any get classes in the game are fun though. So yeah, it's kind of interesting with the coin flip ability. I do like that, and I do enjoy the uh, kind of RNG aspect of it, I guess. But it's just not much you really need to think about. And when it, when a class doesn't really ask you to think all that much, and you know it's just a mindless kind of just spammy class, then you kind of you kind of uh, running into the area where yeah, it's pretty boring. So I don't think I think it's an amazing Solomon class in terms of just pure utility. This class is amazing. Um, in terms of whether it's worth your time and whether I think it's personally fun, yeah, it's it's up to you really. You can you can probably make a judgment based on what you've seen in this video already for yourself. But other than that, guys, that's about it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.